Pre-Calculus Unit 1, Lesson 6, Graphical Transformations. So we've seen different transformations before. Reflections and translations are called rigid because they leave the size and the shape unchanged. Translations just move it along to a different spot, and reflections put it over some sort of axis. Non-rigid transformations are the stretches and shrinks, whether they're vertical or horizontal. They either make it pull it away or push it down towards one of the axes. Everything, of course, that touches x directly affects only the x value, which is the horizontal direction, and anything outside of the function affects the y value, which goes in the vertical direction. Transformations of x all work backwards from the transformations of y. Assuming c is a positive number, if we subtract a positive number, it's going to go c right. If you add c, it will go c left. Again, that will change the x value. If you add it on the outside of the function, it's going to go up. If you subtract, it will go down. So this is our original function. So if we take f of x plus 4, that's going to and move it 4 to the left. That would be from f of x plus 4. It's going to go 4 left. And we recognize that this is the quadratic or squaring function. f of x equals x squared. So the new function must be x plus 4 squared. This original function is the absolute value function. We want the transformation f of x plus 2. That's going to shift everything up to. Again, the original function is the absolute value function, and then this would be adding 2 on the outside of that. This is the cubing function. f of x minus 3 will shift everything 3 to the right, and we would have to put that x minus 3 inside of that, which would now be x minus 3 cubed reflections across the axes are. If you put it on the outside, that's going to change the y value. So it's going to go from up to down or down to up. That will now be across the x-axis. If you put it in inside, it's going to change across this way, which is across the y-axis. Even functions will not change under this transformation because f of x and f of minus x are the same. So for each given transformation, sketch the graph of the new function on the same axes. Describe each transformation. This g of x is f of minus x is a reflection across the y-axis. And that means we're going to take whatever we had for the negative x and move it to the positive x. Whatever we had for a positive x, we're going to move it across to what we have now for the negative x. This mine of f of x changes the sign of the y. So whatever we had up for the y will go down for the y, but with the same x. It'll be on the same vertical line, but if it was at 2 here, it will do, move down to minus 2. Whatever was at minus 3 would move up to plus 3, and so on. Again, that's a reflection across the x-axis. And this is a reflection like this one across the y-axis, but because it's an even function, there is no change in the function. Even though this one moves here and this one moves here, you can't notice that. You'll end up with the same function in the graph. Stretches and shrinks, which again are going to change the shape of the function. If, it's, if you're dividing by a number on the inside for a horizontal, there will be a stretch. If you take it as dividing by a number on the inside, there will be a stretch if c is more than 1 or a shrink is less than c. But if you look at it as 1 over c of x, then if 1 over c is less than 1, there's a stretch. And if 1 over c is bigger than 1, there's a shrink. So depending on how you look at this, if you look at it as dividing, then both stretches go for c bigger than 1 or c between 0 and 1 for both the vertical and the horizontal. But if you look at this as multiplying, if you're dividing by 2, that's multiplying by a half. So a half of x would be a stretch of 2 because you're dividing by 2. So just keep that in mind for the horizontal, that it's the opposite. Either you have to think of it as dividing instead of multiplying, or instead of, like I said here, the shrinks would be the c's that are bigger than 1, and the stretches would be in between here. If you multiply by c on the outside of the function, it's going to stretch up this way or shrink down that way because it's multiplying the y. This one will stretch away from the y-axis or towards, depending on the values you have. So here we have g is f of 2x. This is going to affect the x value, so that's a horizontal, either shrink or stretch. 
if you want to think of this as multiplying, then the two would tell you you're actually doing the opposite, which is dividing by a half or multiplying by a half when you actually do it. So it's a horizontal shrink of factor one half. Or you can say that multiplying by two is the same thing as dividing by a half, and then you would still get that horizontal shrink of a half. So however you think about the horizontal ones, so the opposite of the vertical, parent function is the absolute value, so the new function is the absolute value of 2x, and this is a horizontal shrink of a half, meaning it's going to go in a half, or because we know from absolute value properties that the, that's the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of x, which is 2 times that, we can also think of that as a vertical stretch of factor 2. But that's only because it's the absolute value function. This transformation is always a horizontal shrink, and for the absolute value, it can be thought of as a vertical stretch of factor 2. It would not work for all functions. 2 of f of x, this is the vertical stretch of factor 2, where we're doubling whatever the y value is. This we recognize as the square root function, so this transformation of that is 2 times the square root of x. This one, of course, we do not know what that is, so we can't name a parent. We won't be able to write the function. This is a vertical shrink of 1 third, so we're going to take each y and divide by 3, and it will shrink downwards towards the x-axis. We also have absolute value transformations, where we take the absolute value of a function. In this part, this is the absolute value of all the y's. So whatever is started off with a positive y, meaning whatever started off above the y-axis, is going to stay the same, and only the parts that were below the x-axis are going to be reflected across the x-axis and be above. So everything here will end up above the x-axis. The parts that were above will be unchanged. The parts that were below will be reflected across the x-axis. This one, the absolute value is on the inside, so that means that whatever you had for minus x will become whatever you had for x. What you had on the right will be unchanged. Whatever you had on the left will mirror what you have on the right. If the right half at 2 is at 3, then minus 2 will also be at 3. For each one, sketch the graph. This absolute value is on the outside. That means whatever was positive will stay positive. Whatever was negative will be reflected above. So this was at minus 3, we'll go to plus 3, and so on. And I'll just note that this original function is the line 3 halves x minus 3 because there is a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2 thirds. So this new function is the absolute value of that. If we have the absolute value of f of x here, again, we can't see the whole function, but this original function was this. Everything that was above the x-axis stays there. Everything that was below gets reflected up, and it should be the same shape. My curves may not look quite like that. This should have been curved exactly the same as the one below. And the same one here, this should have been exactly what that one was, curved exactly the same. And whatever was below now will be reflected above. f of the absolute value of x, positive on the x side, is going to stay the same. Whatever was on the negative x side would mirror what's on the right side. So in order to know what happens at minus 2, you have to look at 2 and put the same thing. 0, of course, doesn't move. This was at 4, so at minus 4 it will also go to the same height. So that will give you this function. Again, because that's the same function here, because this is inside the function so that it only goes where the x was in the original function, and ends up 3 halves the absolute value of x minus 3. For combinations of transformations, the order in which you do them is important. So you should first go left or right horizontally, stretch or shrink horizontally, reflect across the y-axis, meaning those are all things that apply to the x value. Then you're going to stretch or shrink vertically and to reflect across the x-axis and shift vertically up or down. The shifting up or down should always be done last in order for the transformation to actually match what the function shows. So if I want to look at this transformation, I start inside first. I would first go right one. Then I would stretch vertically by a factor of two, and the last thing, shift up three. So I would first take a point, shift it right one, multiply the y by two, so it's at a zero. Multiplied by two is still zero, and then shift up three. This one I would go right one, 
I would double the y value. It was at one, I would go to two and then go up three. For this one, I would go right one. It's at a height of two. I double that and go to four, and then I go up one, two, three. This one is at a height of three. I am again, I'm going to shift the x one. I'm going to double the height to six, and then I'm going to add three. If we describe that transformation, we've already said what we're doing here. This we recognize is the square root function. So what goes in here has to be the x minus one that only shows up inside of the function. And then these other things end up on the outside of that function. So this is twice the absolute value of x minus one plus three. And if we were to actually look at what happens to the coordinates, so in function notation, the x is always opposite but in coordinate notation, it actually matches what we have. We would go right one, so we would have to add one to the x. We're doubling the y and adding three. In this one, we have what? This affects the x. We're dividing by two, so that's a horizontal stretch of factor two. It's going to stretch the x's away from the y-axis. Then we're going to take a vertical shrink of a half, so we're going to now put it closer to the x-axis, we're going to take a vertical shrink of a half and then translate down three. So since this is the original function, or multiply x by two, that stays the same. Then we're going to take the half of zero, that also stays the same, then we go down three. This one is at an x of two, so we're going to double that, that would go to four, because that's a stretch of two. Then we're going to take a half of the y and then go down one, two, three. This one is at an x of four. We're going to double that and go to eight. It's at a height of eight, so I'm going to go to half of that and then go down one, two, three. That will give me this part. This function would now be transformed to this one. We don't have an original function, so we can't do this. However, we can do in coordinate notation what happens to the coordinates. Whatever we had for x is doubled because it's a horizontal stretch of factor two and then we're going to take a half of the y value and subtract three. So if we're given different functions now and we want to do this sequence of transformations, what would be the new function? We're going to translate right two, so we would subtract two from the x, and then we're going to stretch horizontally by a factor of two. Now you don't take the whole x minus two and divide by two, it only changes the x, so you divide the x by two and then you're going to translate by one, that's on the outside. That will give you this. Another thing, if you were to write this is, this would be x minus four over two. So if you want to do it as the stretch first, the stretch or shrink first, you would have to write it all as one thing, and so it would not be two right then, it would be four right. So you have to make sure of how you look at them and that the order that you're doing them is correct. Otherwise, you will not get the correct things. So again, make sure you're doing them in the right orders. This one we want to horizontally stretch by a factor of two, translate right to and up one unit. So now we want to translate. So first you would do x over two. That would give you the horizontal stretch. And now when we translate right to, again, that's affecting the x. Well, that's now in the numerator. So that would now be x minus two that we would change that to. And then we would go up one, that would add one. So understand whatever you're doing affects only the x value. So here we subtracted x minus two, and then we replace this with the stretch of two by dividing by two. Here we did the stretch first, so that was x over two, and then the x was in the numerator, so the translation went up there. That would give this function with a two in, this one gives it with a four in. If we have this function and we want to translate left two, that means we would put a plus two on the inside. Vertical shrink on the outside would be a half and translating down two would be minus. Since this is f of x plus two, wherever x is, we have to put x plus two. So on each one of these, we would have to put x plus two to get this function. And then for this last one, we want to take the same function. We want to translate left two and down two and now shrink vertically. So we're switching the orders to see what happens to the difference in the function, just as we did here. We took the same function, but now what changes? For this one, you're going to go left to, that's done first, then you have to go down to, and then when you shrink, you're shrinking that whole thing 
that would be a half because this would be the new y value and if you're shrinking at last that's what you would be shrinking you would end up with this function which is different from this one whereas you're taking a half if we looked at it in the same order that we did here we would really only be going down one instead of two